This is Anthony. Anthony, say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Nice to, nice to meet you. And? And uh, I also want to um, thoroughly give thanks to uh, Chris and um, everybody out there that, that was praying for me. Um, you know, I think there's, that he's doing a lot for a lot of people. He's done a lot for me as well. Um, and I think that uh, I came out to Los Angeles for a reason, you know, to meet him. And, um, I, I'm just ecstatic that uh, he would do something like that to an extent where, you know, have people pray for somebody that he barely knows. So, you know, drug addiction and everything like that has affected my life deeply. So I want to do something with that for other people. Um, so, yeah, I just really appreciate everything. You know, it's not about me, it's about helping people. So, thanks. Well, just keep him in your prayers, and I'm going to be on him like glue, because uh, uh, there's a reason why him and I are together, and why he, why I found him, and we connected. So, uh, God's great. Praise Jesus. So, please go to my, I'm just so, so tired. I walked so many miles today. I'm kind of running out of breath. So, I told him, come on, let's go out and do a live feed real quick. So, I, uh, my financial partners and my prayer partners out there, people can see uh, see you and beat you because with your prayers and everything, and he, he uh, he's back, he's back in the program, and he's back. He seems like he's on track, and uh, very uh, kind young man. I've got a whole heart of gold. So, just in a bad place, and I really believe that he's going to make that turn. So, if uh, you feel the Spirit leading to you, go to chrisparrishministry.org, make that contribution. And remember, Dorothy out of Tampa, $42, and my old cell phone changed her whole life. And uh, she messaged me last month, said she's still doing great, so praise the Lord. It's just the little things, helping one person at a time, in Jesus' name. Hey, buddy. Hey. How you doing? Are you hungry? Huh? For me. <laughs> huh? Free, buddy. Praise the Lord, right? Huh? Kids, 
kids, kids, kids. So sad. So sad. This is, I want to tell you, I came to a conclusion. This is what happened when there's no rule of law. And there's just, this whole skid row is a environment of its own with no rules, no policies, no nothing. And uh, when the government allows that to happen, this is what happens. Uh, you never see cops on foot. And look, I could think of 10 different things I could down, do down here. gets a grip on the rule of law and have some accountability, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. That's what happens to society when there's no laws in place. There's so many drugs down here. So many. So many. But, you know, we got Monica. Veronica is still in the clinic. Guy Anthony is still doing good. And uh, Edwin, Edwin, he, his, he's the one that my heart breaks for. Been locked up 30, 36 years. <clears throat> but you see the uh, actual deterioration of America because this is getting worse. It's going to be, if something doesn't happen, it's going to be across this country. And you say, oh, well, okay, well, you know, think about the Great Depression. We have more people in this country today than then. If something happened like that, it huh? would be uh, uh, awful. Plus with the drugs back then, yeah, they had, you know, they were bootleg and liquor. And, and, you know, today you got all kinds of different drugs out in the street. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
that right over there. That right over there. Wait, one. Two, three, Said, I think we're, uh, you can't put, yeah, you put the burden on them, but man, our government just, uh, and the, even the, uh, even the, uh, the uh, organizations, I mean, everything's right here on this block. You got a mission up here, one down there, you got a clinic is across the street over here and uh, free health care free everything and this this is just this is nothing to do with. I mean yeah, it goes forever and ever and ever I saw a lot of kids little kids grandmothers My goodness, this is too funny. <laughs> oh, I love my life. You guys have no idea. No, you have no idea. Tom, Sam, this is where I'm at. Billy says you're going to buy something in this store. Let me show you a price. Hold on. Let me show you a price. Look, I would never even pay for this stuff. Right here. Look. That's $875, Jill. That right there, 875 do you think I look good in that? Mm, no, I don't think so. Eight hundred seventy-five dollars. Let's see. Billy, did you find something? Eighteen hundred. Billy, you're live on Facebook. Did you find anything new? Hey, no seven. other place yeah. rather be than Beverly Hills. Yeah, right. I can't you, you, you can't, huh? Today, I maybe. thought you had the money in the bank, man. Well, right, look, we're in Beverly Hills. <laughs> I'm in Beverly Hills. We took off for the day. So, Billy, let's get out of Skid Row. Let's go to Beverly Hills, see what all the talk's about. Uh, a pair of tennis shoes. Well, they ain't a bad price. $275 for that one, folks. If you guys see anything you like in here, look. look. $1,045, Jill. Jill. And they say air on them. And they're blue. Your collar. And hey, orange. Look. Those would match my sunglasses, you guys. <laughs> Wouldn't they, Billy? Yeah. Billy, would you buy those for me? You sure. $1,000. Yeah, you set yourself up with a pair and, and I'll get myself a pair as well. Me and Billy, Billy, we're having a good day today, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're off Skid Row. Yeah. We're mingling with the rich. Yeah. And uh, they've been kind to us to lay me to the front door. And uh, yeah, we're in Beverly Hills. Look, folks, we're in Beverly Hills. Billy. Come on, let's go. Why? Billy. And, uh, uh, Billy's been in almost every store around here. I can't get him out of it. And it's like... <laughs> we're having fun today. Hey, Billy, you want to, what did it cost us? Nothing to come to Beverly Hills from yeah, Skid Row. Yeah. We didn't spend one penny, did we? Best day ever. Best day ever. 
So you can travel uh, cheap if you sick. We have to stay in homeless shelter so we can help our friends out. That's right. And go see sightseeing and have fun and laugh. And look at this, folks. I want to show you something. If I don't get hit by a car. That's where all the stars are at up there, Jill. Well, look, this is, uh, this is uh, Chris and Billy. 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 This is Chris and Billy show, and we just doing a little. <laughs> we're doing a little premiere of the Chris and Billy show. We think we're going to go live tomorrow again on the Chris and Billy show. We don't know what time. It's about real talk. We think we don't know. We're just having general conversation about life, about Skid Row, about homeless, about addiction, about uh, you know. Yeah, we're going to have fun with it. We're going to laugh, get serious about it, and just loosen up a little bit. Kind of makes us a little bit. Not crazy. Well, thinking, why not just walk in a Nordstrom and see my line of stuff right. just sitting right there? Uh, you could see the Chris and Billy uh, clothing line someday from Skid Row. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If it's so good, then it will uh, yield you know, that. It'll do that. It'll do that. But you guys, we see very interesting things every day, and it's been uh, fun as in the Billy. Huh? Huh? Has it been fun? It's been real and fun. Been, so well, it's, it's been real. real fun. It's been real fun, but it hasn't been real fun. Yeah, yeah. It's just been real fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun that's real. And we we are not we are not under the influence of any drug at all. Maybe a little bit of sodi, sodi, coke, but nothing like that. We just uh, having a little fun with this and see where it goes and see if it lightens people. We're so tired of people just always talking about uh, the politics of this world and things like that. We're talking about real issues in a different kind of light and seeing it from a different light. So this is the Chris Billy Show signing out from Skid Row on 5th in Los Angeles. As you can see the sign out front, Los Angeles Avenue and Winston. Winston, that's a cigarette. Also is on you, don't get any on you. Yeah, there you go, that's from Billy. This is the Grand Market, LA. It is approximately four or five blocks from Skid Row. It is like this every day, but on Saturdays and Sundays, it's like this. Pretty busy. All kinds of food in here. All kinds. You name it, they have it. What would you like? Pizza? You want uh, sushi? You want uh, roast? They even have roast here. It's a market. You can get anything in here, pasta. Tacos. If you have the money, baby, you can buy it here in LA. Walk, do a walk through. Yeah, Billy the other day. Uh, well, this is not Billy. This is the Chris and Anthony show yeah. debut. Chris uh, and Anthony show. The what? The Chris and Anthony show. Yeah, what I say. I like it. You do? Yeah, it's good. You're not jealous or anything because my name's first? No, why would you even <laughs> think of that? <laughs> But my friend Anthony here, I've been working with for what, well, Anthony, about how long now? A couple weeks. More, yeah, Almost a couple of weeks. weeks. And Anthony's uh, keeps going out a little bit farther, then he comes back, and he goes, he's the one I had to go out and search for that everybody prayed for. And um, we appreciate your prayers and concerns for him, and yeah. I just I just sit back and watch him. Yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. Um, it's just a struggle, and if I can give any advice, uh, it's, it's like pick who you hang out with or just don't even hang out with anybody at all and make sure you're okay because um, uh, sometimes people can bring you down. Louder. It's louder. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people can bring you down, um, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't want to go anywhere and they can keep you stuck. So, you know, if, if I want to change, i got to actively do it. i got to do it myself, and I've got to focus on myself you know and uh you know people actually care about me you know i can i need to be around those types of people because i want my life 
I actually like, have a counselor at the clinic I go to and I broke down to my counselor today because I'm actually scared for my life and I've died before on these drugs. So, and your drug of choice is? Heroin. So, heroin? Yeah. And uh, I ended up doing um, a drug called crystal meth and it's horrible. It's just a really evil drug. Hopefully Anthony will show up today. I have faith that he'll show up today because uh, I, I just feel this, the Lord working in him and uh, we're going to do a show today at 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which means in Indiana it'd be 6 o'clock. I came to, you know, this is such a young ministry, what, to see, December, January, February, only three months in the making. But God's, God's hand is so powerful and moves. And I keep telling you guys, when you're sowing a seed, and anything you sow a seed in, you watch it, it'll come back to you tenfold. Every day since, uh, you know, I left Indiana to go to Florida on this quest, this journey, this great journey. And uh, uh, I think I only had 25, 30 bucks when I got to Florida. But uh, I remember leaving Phoenix and coming to LA with just, I think, 12 or $13 in my pocket in the ministry's account. That's it. But I knew the good Lord. I knew that things will be taken care of, my needs and help still helping people out. Uh, we just helped uh, a young lady up in Anderson. And I'm sure that some people are gonna say, oh, that's phony, that's fake, but that's all right, you got your opinion. But what matters the most is that she's happy. She's thrilled. And I'm gonna probably uh, take her uh, under the ministry uh, realm for a little bit and help her and her kids out. There in Anderson, Indiana. Just think about this. A ministry down in Skid Row. How powerful God works. Helping somebody up in Anderson, Indiana. Amazing how that works. Skid Row, L.A. The most dangerous place you could be probably in this country. I mean, there's amulets. Look, there's so much things that are going on. I, I'm putting in this documentary that, look, Trump just called him out yesterday in this... Uh, state that if you don't clean it up we will clean it up and he's right there look it's it's it should not happen in this country rather you agree or disagree with homeless people we shouldn't allow this kind of living standard in this country at all there's got to be something we can do to fix it the problem is this city has neglected the rule of law when there is no rule of law in order. There's this fine line between law and order and chaos. And that's what it is down there. Nothing but chaos. Awful, no one, uh, it's so unhealthy. And I'm down there living among it. Me and Anthony is gonna take off the weekend. We're gonna do this show Monday through Friday if everything works out at uh, three o'clock. And um, we're gonna take off the weekend and see if we can go find our buddy Billy in uh, Beverly Hills. That's where he usually hangs out and gets his uh, dope. I'm a little concerned about him. Oh boy, he's a big trimmer. Big trimmer. He makes me come out here tonight, late at night, two, three o'clock in the morning looking for him. He's really a big trimmer. He's putting me sniffing for danger. Right down the middle. Give uh, some of you that's uh, just now joining me, Chris Parrish, Direct Impact Ministry, a ministry that's uh, empowering and uh, helping our homeless friends. Yeah, uh, yeah, for a minute. For our discussion. Our God given talent. difference in people's lives, our friends' lives. Dorothy from Tampa, we got off the street. Praise the Lord. 
and then uh, just a lot. Just a lot. Yeah, I, I thought, I thought for sure Anthony would be there. He told me last night before we uh, went to bed that. Uh, crazy around here, isn't it? Man, they need to clean it up. That's what they need to do. Uh, I see you in there, bro. That right there is nicknamed Rico. 36 years, just got out two weeks ago. He formed a friendship, and I've been giving him uh, cash money so he can catch the bus. For helping him out and not get discouraged and go back 36 years. His uh, daughter and grandkids live about an hour from here. He takes a bus. He doesn't get his check until next month. So our ministry's been helping him out, trying to keep him out, keep him encouraging him every day, man. You don't want to go back, dude, man. I know this is a rough part of the deal. Because you got to realize, 36 years. 36 years and he ain't seen healing on a cell phone. I've been trying to take teaching what an uh, app is. <laughs> This is what, if your country or your community does not have any law and order in place, there's a real fine line to work. If you don't feel that you have protection, they're not going to come in here. This is what happens. Go to other third countries. They have the same thing. Hi, uh, to start off, I'm from uh, Miami, Florida originally. originally. <coughs> Moved up here when I was younger, around uh, the time I went to first grade. Um, what else do I want to know? Got kids, family. Yeah, I got two. I got actually my mom and my stepdad are in uh, Georgia. I moved to Georgia. I moved to North Carolina when I was younger. Moved around a little bit, but primarily I grew up in uh, Georgia. And uh, my sister's in New Orleans. Um, and yes, I have two kids. I haven't seen them in a while due to some, uh, you know, complexities of uh, addiction and stuff like that. Um, the mother of my kids is actually in prison. Um, she was, she uh, got them taken away when me and her were separated. She was on drugs and I couldn't get them back. So that's one of the things that I uh, primarily use drugs over is uh, the loss of my kids. And uh, I, that's one of the, things, the reasons I want to get right is so I can find them. Uh, how about, uh, when was the first time you tried a drug? Uh, when I was probably 13, it was alcohol, or 10, probably about 10 years old, I was, it was alcohol with my friend. And, and you went to alcohol to what? Alcohol, marijuana, pills, hallucinogens, harder drugs, and eventually pain pills and heroin. Give me, give him some encouraging words before uh, we sign up. All right, uh, be the best and act your best at all times. You know, uh, don't let people bring you down. The only person that uh, can really control you is God. Love yourself. I love it. A lot of drugs too. And the drugs. Yeah. She got to throw that out there. I got big fucking bumper <laughs> shit here. And the drugs. <clears throat> we were good at um, just kind of being in the loop for a while there, and now it's. Well, it is part of uh, this society that uh, is really uh, affecting the core of America, really bringing it down, like we see it every day. Yeah. That people are just. Uh, what are you looking at? I'm looking at me. And There's Jacob Knight. He's, he's a buddy of mine. Santa Monica Pier. You ever been to Santa Monica Pier? Santa Monica Pier? No. no uh, I think once. Once? Yeah. I well, like, um, my favorite beach is um, Hermosa. Um, and um, they have good frozen yogurt. Really? Yeah. They have, um, it's called, I think, brown cow or skinny cow or something. Hmm. And it's a frozen yogurt shop. 
You know, I have not been to the ocean on this side yet. I'm going to go probably next week just to see the view. Uh, yeah. And I hear it's beautiful because you're kind of elevated up on the mountain or yeah. something. Hey, they were just doing a movie up here. He says a commercial. I don't yeah. know how Billy would know. If you, you need to get closer into the camera because they can't see it. A Wells Fargo commercial. A what? A Wells Fargo. It looks like a Wells Fargo commercial. With them old cars? Yeah. I thought it was a Bonnie and Clyde maybe kind of commercial. Now look, if it was a Bonnie and Clyde commercial, I'd be there. I'd be, I'd be in the car. So, crack a smile without cracking a smell. Yeah, and we got some Cheetos and uh, a whole loaf of bread. We may end up eating all this today, you know? Don't, well, you don't mess with Snoopy's ear, man. I mean, that, look, he's, he can't look. You got his thing all the way down his eyes, you know? He's been, he's went from the ditch to the pit house overnight. Right. I mean, three months ago, he was, his nose was in a ditch. Yeah. Now he's traveled from Florida to Arizona to L.A. Yeah. So, uh, clubbing. hey, let me tell you something. Anybody tries to take this dog, they, they will be in big trouble. That's right, damn it. Uh, go in the washing machine one day. Yeah, he needs to go to the washing machine. Uh -uh. I made tuna salad for lunch. Stephanie, ooh, that sounds good, too. Tuna salad, don't it? Yeah. Oh, man. Counter. Sam Lacey's watching. How you doing, Mr. Lacey? So we'll be on we'll be on quite often as long as uh, uh, the the left here, oh, Billy here. Burger. This is how we're going to end the show. I'm going to this is how we're going to end the show. I'm going to say from the left, Billy Burger, and then you're going to say from the right, Christopher Robbins. Because my grandmother used to call me Christopher Robbins. No way. Oh yeah. Dude, that's such a like famous name. I know. Robbins. Anyway. Well, that's we're going to be cute. famous one day. Dude, I'm inside my. You're inside that box. You got to get out of it, man. You got to get out of that box. Too many people live inside their comfort zone. They need to get out of it. Fear, I've been telling Billy this, Billy Burger from the left, fear is false evidence appearing real in your mind. It never happened. That's why I've always, when I uh, want to do something, I felt the uh, spirit lead me to it, I just do it. Whatever it is. I've had people leave me because of it, get mad at me because of it. It's like, I am going for it. It's my God-given dream and talent and i'm going for it and uh, uh, until i got in some tribber you know we talked about that man i got in tribber go get in that tribber yeah and mm -hmm. uh, i went down the wrong mm -hmm. pathway of eating them pills and drinking and partying and oh, it was bad that tribber you're yeah. gonna have to uh now if we do get in tribber i'm gonna have to run the extra mile and we'll get us a strawberry shake first gonna pour it all over your forehead and then i'm gonna put that straw and put it in your mouth a little bit at a time I like strawberry yeah, shake, matter of fact. That sounds good right now with peanut butter and jelly oh, sandwich. I know it. Mm. Wake up, America. Better wake up. Better wake up. This drug from Mexico. It is evil. You think meth is uh, bad? This is a totally different kind of map. It's, uh, I already got one person that's seen it in Texas. They know what's like. I've seen a little bit of it in Tampa. And now in LA, it is really bad. It will destroy a community. And I promise you that. I've seen it firsthand, and there's an example right there. This dude's been doing this right here for the last 30 minutes, been watching it. But I'm telling you, these people stay up for months, and well, I don't know what else I can do, but just to tell, tell you, when it comes to your community, you better be fair, because here in L.A., they consider it the norm. And when a society considers it as a norm, as everyday, everyday life, that's dangerous territory we're on, my friends. Dangerous territory. But please don't even come down here, man. Get down on Skid Row. We have allowed this to happen in America. A uh, bad situation down here. And don't say, well, that's only in L.A. Look, it's in Cincinnati, Ohio, Northern K Kentucky now, that drug. I don't tell uh, look, I've worn... I warned, uh, I've sent stuff to uh, Donald Trump Jr. And I'm about ready to send some stuff to the state rep and the uh, senator, whoever represents this area. I think it's closing, man. 
I don't know. And Miss Walters and the governor. It keeps moving closer and closer to the downtown business district. Here's the police department, folks. LAPD. And here's Skid Row. And you can buy any kind of drug down here you want. Heroin. The crystal. To this new meth. To marijuana. Of course, it's legal here. To cocaine. This camera straight. Because I know it shakes. And I'm, I've had a couple people complain about it. But look. I'm going to be real with you guys. I've seen a few people get their head knocked off because they were out they were out taking pictures and uh, video camera. So it's dangerous. Uh, they don't like it. But somebody's got to be down here kind of infiltrate, I guess, get in to show America that this can happen in your community. Don't say it can because it can. Hopefully you understand that when it comes to the, your community. It's in Ohio now, Cincinnati, Ohio. Look it up Cincinnati.com, a report. And in Northern Kentucky, this Mexican, Mexico dope is almost 98% pure. And it makes people psycho from norm to psycho real quick for weeks in advance. And they see things that are not really there. I've witnessed it. I had a lady on the bus had a hammer out talking to somebody on the bus. I no one was standing there. But she had a hammer out in her hand and I was five feet away from her. And look, that bus kept on going. How is Anthony doing Nikki? She didn't show up last night. Uh, you know, I'm I'm hard. I gotta admit that I'm hard on uh, some of these people here and it's like you gotta produce, you gotta be real, I'm here to help you and I keep telling them that I got people out there that's willing to help and hopefully he'll show up tonight. But uh, Billy is uh, making that turn and I think Billy is ready to leave uh, Skid Row and uh, go get him a somewhat normal life. So I think I've convinced him to go back to Indiana with me when I go home in June for a short period of time uh, to see my boys and do some speaking engagements there and uh, meet my staff and uh, meet some other friends. And uh, I have a job lined up for him already and a place to stay already lined up. He's just going to have to take it. And uh, I think he, I think he might be there. I need you to pray for him for his breakthrough. That uh, he accepts this offer, and we get one person on this kid row. Praise the Lord, man! Praise the Lord. Up, I don't smoke. So every corner I go around there, I'll just for a cigarette, but I don't smoke. So I don't have. Um, this gets uh, more busier and more busier as you can tell as the night goes on by 2 o'clock in the morning it's just packed with uh, my friends it's sad see That's walking in the trenches right there, folks. Oh, man.
I'm still having that after effect after getting robbed. Man, I'll tell you what. Lucky Snoopy didn't release his uh, Kung Fu, activate his Kung Fu on him. Try to calm Snoopy down, but uh, it's all good. I'm trying to wrap everything up. It's hard to get a ID when you don't have anything. So I uh, just about got it all done. Hopefully tomorrow it'll be done by noon. I'll be back uh, doing some things. But I uh, only had like uh, mm, probably six. I don't care that much cash in there. You know, my bill is usually less than $10, and I think I had $6 in there. It's just the uh, idea that everything that was in it is gone. And uh, he robbed me by knife point. So it's like, you know, it is what it is. But I didn't uh, feel uh, scared or anything like that. Just whatever God's protecting me. And that's all that matters. I will be departing from uh, Skid Row, L.A. in about two weeks. I haven't decided where I'm going yet. I'm waiting on the Lord to tell me where to go to. And I'll be heading there. And then I'm coming home. Coming to Indiana. Folks, I'm coming to Indiana. And... Uh, for about four to six weeks to see my boys and see my uh, staff and whoever wants to hang out and go eat some I need some home cooked meals so I'm open to uh, anybody that wants to cook me a home cooked meal and we can sit around a fellowship and we can talk about uh, the journey and uh, things like that until I go back out after that I'm heading to Chicago probably somewhere around 1st of July and up to uh, Minnesota South Dakota, North Dakota, North Dakota, South Dakota, and then I'll be back home for the whole month of December. So I'll go out about four months and come home, go out four months and come home for 30 days. You miss the little things in life. You miss those times of getting up and going to the refrigerator and getting a glass of cold milk. A bowl of cereal. I miss a bowl of cereal. So uh, I miss a spaghetti. I miss meatloaf. If you feel like giving a few dollars, 10, 15, 20 dollars, go to my website and uh, give. I'm going to do a marathon this week on raising some money to get me to uh, probably Sacramento or Vegas. I haven't figured out which one I want to go to yet. <clears throat> I just had this funny feeling that, uh, I don't know, we'll see where we go. But uh, I got to still work on Bill. I can't leave Billy, and it's driving me nuts because I know he's supposed to be with me. It's just him, the, him surrendering to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and just going with it. I mean, he doesn't have no family here, so it's like, dude, don't look. You don't want to be stuck on Skid Row. I have a job lined up for him. The ministry has a job lined up for him already in Indiana, uh, making about uh, twelve bucks an hour got this housing uh, almost locked in and uh, we are going to pay two months of his uh, rent there and it's a share a room type of deal so it's a place where I used to live at when I got out of prison a guy that I know so he's got a great offer on the table we'll just see if he takes it and uh, get out of skid row yeah you know I mean Look, we're helping two families up in Anderson. I mean, don't mention their names or don't tell you who they are. We're spending money on them up in Anderson, Indiana. Uh, helping uh, Billy a lot down here. And we're setting up, uh, you know, we have a scholarship fund set up that I'm going to give out to a person in Anderson. One to a student up in Anderson. Christian, my boy's working on all the details of that. And... Uh, so we will be giving out a $1,000 scholarship. So things are great, of course, because when you live uh, in the realm of God and the Holy Spirit, only great things happen. Even sometimes you get robbed, it's still a great day. It's a wonderful day, and you praise Him for your, His protection and His grace and His love, my friends. But the uh, LA's been good. It's time for me to move on in the next couple weeks. Just got to figure out where I'm going. And I'm just trying to get Billy to go. And then we'll be home probably sometime in middle of April. First, no later than 1st of May. If everything works out all right. And I'll be home. And we'll stay home for uh, four to six weeks. And uh, make me some rounds at some churches. <clears throat> also, uh, I'm putting together some shirts that have Snoopy on them. 
and it's going to say something like Skid Row 2020 survived or uh, God is good or God is so good uh, with Snoopy on it and with our logo on it. So if you're interested, let me know and uh, I'll have those when I come up to Indiana and I'm going to be selling them at the churches and elsewhere to, to uh, fund the ministry on the second round out. Look at all these clothes. Some of you women would love to have a heyday down here. There's a fashion district down here in LA. There's a flower district. There's a toy district. There's uh, all kinds of different districts down here. Just nothing but shops with reasonable clothes. Look, let me show you that down there. All of them clothes. Everywhere. Everywhere. Clothes over there. Everywhere. If you ever get a chance to come out to LA, you got to go to Santa Monica Bay. So beautiful. Beautiful. That side of the country, the ocean, <clears throat> the weather is just beautiful. Do you know that in California, this month in March, it usually only rains rain one day? History is one day. The rest of the time, it's nothing but sunshine. I guess that's why people come out here and live wealthy. <clears throat> fashion district, another fashion district. Yeah, shop after shop after shop. We are about uh, two, no, let's see. Yeah, we're about two blocks away from Skid Row. So you have all this, and then about two blocks away, you have, mm, awful. Awful, awful, awful. Look. You can get anything you want on Skid Row. You can get all kinds of dope. When I first got down here, they kept saying Crystal, Crystal, and I thought, who's Crystal? Where's she at? Because I keep looking around. That's Crystal Meth. I didn't know that, but look. You can get cocaine, Crystal Meth. You can get heroin. You can get pills. You can get everything. Marijuana. Well, obviously, marijuana is legal, but you can even get liquor down here. Shots of liquor. <clears throat> Los Angeles thought they were going to be smart and move the liquor stores you know, six, seven blocks out, so they wouldn't be around Skid Row. Well, you know, it's there. You can't, do, you know, you, people are going to bring it in. Two to three dollars a shot. I say it all the time. This is what happens when you have that fine line of law and order and chaos, and there's no law and order. It's nothing but chaos 24-7. The shelter that I stay at, <clears throat> it is a 20 Three million dollar year operation. Twenty-three million dollars a year costs fifty-three thousand dollars a day to run it. One shelter out of many that's down there. There's just ain't one. There's probably six down there. So then you that don't even count the security that's out. They have uh, low paying security walking around. You know. So, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Like I've said before. And they got drug programs down there everywhere. You can't have a drug program when you're five feet away from heroin or crack or cocaine everywhere. It just, it's not feasible. You know, your money in return is not benefiting the real deal. And a lot of great things are happening. Like I said before, and I'll end it with this, we're helping two families up in Anderson right now and they're thrilled to death we jumped in there said we'll help you out for the next few weeks get, get you by and uh we're helping billy down here we're doing a scholarship uh setting some money aside for a person up in madison county for a one thousand dollar scholarship and uh putting money in other funds splitting it up and eventually we'll be able to pay two to three months uh, rent, things like that. So, uh, slowly but surely, we are getting there and making a difference in quite a bit of people's lives. But Billy, Billy is in need of prayer. Uh, hopefully, 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 I pray to Jesus that he'll make the right choice. Because I can't stay here forever. i got to go. And he's got to he's go through some hoops here. He, we can't see your big head because Snoopy's in the way, yeah, dude. Right. Okay, let's, um, yeah, he's got till Monday at 5 to produce this driver's license because he can't get, no yeah, I mean, he, uh, you know, once I leave here, it's, yeah, I, got, I gotta go. 
I have to go to the next city. I have I'm to. I'm going. Huh? I'm going. Tell these people because if you don't. I'm on my way. To Indiana. Get ready for me. You're going to change your life. I'm going to try my best. You're going to change your life, Billy. Yes, yes. See how hard I am on him? That's why we was treated at the drug program in uh, Beckley, West Virginia. Just kidding. But they were hard on me. Yeah. They were. Why? Well, they, they got to. You got to. Look, What's you got to. Chris for the station. Oh, see, she loves me. Karen's on. She, Karen, say hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. Karen, uh, when I first went on my first subway in Anderson, she was the manager at Bo Ricks, and she cut my hair for years, which back then, see, I had some. Right. Yeah. I had some. Yeah. And um, it's been a long time. She's ago. always been an entrepreneur, and now she has her own beauty shop. See? Wow. Great things happen to you when you plant the seeds of greatness. What? Please go. Please go, that cuz. Please go. I want Chris to come back. I miss him. <laughs> See, I got, they don't love me back there. Yeah. There are some people that don't like me, though, but that's okay. Can you imagine that? that? Yeah. Why would people not like... I don't know. I don't know, dude. I mean... Taking some, oh, wait a minute. Taking somebody from Skid Row, yeah. off Skid Row, because yeah. of my financial partners and my prayer partners. My prayer partners, just important as my financial partners, because they're praying for you. Yeah. To have that breakthrough, to have that moment, yeah. that lightning, where, oh, I don't want this no more. I want something bigger and better in my life. Yeah. And I you hear. can find it in Indiana, where the corn is. Yeah, yeah. I know. I have to cut the corn off the top of the cob. Oh, well, we'll do that. Well, we're not going to do it for you. Uh, I believe, uh, look, Billy's coming to Indiana. This ministry, Direct Impact Ministry, is taking somebody off Skid Row and getting them into Indiana. And I already got a job lined up for him from my boss. He's guaranteed him a job, guaranteed him weekly pay. Good job. And we got him housing already squared away. I talked to the landlord. We're going to pay for Snoopy, and this ministry is going to pay for two months, two months of rent for Mr. Billy. Right here. Yeah. Hey, give me some love on that, man. High five, huh? Uh, Just because of all these people here. Uh, huh? They would love changing people's lives. Awesome. You know? I just want to get out there and work. Good what? job. Be like a, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, you know, Maybe. I think. Maybe. What are you going? What are you going to miss it down here? I'm going to miss. I'm not going to miss. I'm going to miss the. I'm going to miss the, I'm gonna miss the culture. I'm going to miss the cuisine. Ain't the cuisine great? The rice and beans we get almost every day. I'll never miss a zero. A what? I won't miss a zero, dude. What zero mean? That means having no money ever. Right. You'll get paid every week, every Friday yeah. by noon. And I'll love that. Yeah. And we got him set up for some aftercare, some counseling. That sounds horrible. Kind but, of, but no, that's good for you. No, we all need counseling. Like I'm only in it for the money, but the literal fact is I'm not doing financially well here. So. And well, too, you're, we're not. I have to be. Real. We're not doing. We're not doing well men, mentally either because you're in this environment. Yeah. This environment will suck you right into craziness. No, I just need to get out of the California loop and the ca California financial binding that I'm in that leads me to... See, Christy just said you can do it, Billy. I hope so. Do you know what kind of story this is to the direct impact ministry financial partners and prayer partners that we're taking somebody off of Skid Row? Snoopy is so happy he's going to do the Snoopy dance. Look, hey! We got somebody to come back to Indiana with Chris, with Dad. Yeah. You won't miss the peace smell, Christy said. I right, know, hey. Right, oh, hey. Look. Look at me. You can do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela. Pamela, how you doing? There's Pamela. Say hi, Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Whit Whitlock. Pamela Whitlock. Great supporter of mine, too. You're all great supporters. I hate saying that because I'm afraid somebody might get mad at me and I don't want that to happen either. But Billy's been robbed too down here, haven't you? Three times. Three times. I've been robbed one time. Snoopy ain't been robbed at all because you know why? So look, when I got robbed, Snoopy came out of that bag and he was going to put that uh, K9 Kung Fu action in play. And I said, hey, Snoop, back to We'll pray for him. So we did. Anyways.
You know what he's right. I'm getting tired. No, you're hungry. I'm hungry. You want to go to the store. I want to go to the store and get candy. Candy? I do too. Bring up that sugar. Christy said get off the skid row. Yeah, I know. Oh, well. They want me to come home. They want me out of here because they they worry about me all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The other day, some guy in broad daylight got stabbed. I mean, it was crazy. He was right over there in the corner. Broad daylight, man, had two stab wounds and he was like... Oh my god. Uh -huh. I like cigarettes. It's dangerous. No, you don't smoke on while you're on, online, you know? I mean, that's disrespectful, you know? I am. Uh, well, folks, I wish we were... Do, I well, wish I had some way to entertain everyone, but I don't. Like okay. a guitar, you know, we play guitar in the background. Yeah? Uh, no, yeah. I will, what we'll do is we'll get you a clown hat next time. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to do a big show here the night, the day, the day, night or the morning we leave. Yeah. Like, I think what we need to do is get a couple uh, lazy boys and put them out in the middle of the road there yeah. and say goodbye to Skid Row. Ooh. And have some uh, some of these old plants or some, uh, I'm sure there's marijuana plants around here. Yeah. Have them stationed, you know, like an off, like a little uh, stage. Yeah. And we can send that to Good Morning America and say, get your hearts out. We're having Good Morning America. Where I'm staying at, 52, I did the research on it, $52,000 a day to keep this place running. And they're in a hole. $52,000. They're not helping them. You're right, maybe church is not helping these folks. I'm telling you. Anytime you see a church out pitching uh, this out or that out or whatever, they may think they are, but they're not. They're really not. I know they mean good, and I don't take mean the wrong, but I get so frustrated because I see it firsthand. I'm in the midst of it. And it's just, I told the guy, I said, look, dude, if I was an addict, where, I'd want to stay down there. You're going to feed me. You're, the, the, the state is going to give me free money, free health care. Why would I get to stay in a tent? I get to listen to music all night long? I get to party all night long? Of course. Come on, that's a no-brainer. Really? You can get any drug down here you want. Right here on the corner. Any corner. There's like, this guy had a list. Like 10 he rattled off. I said, dude, look. No, I don't do that. At all. I don't know, folks, but we need to change. We need to change some things up. And I know prayer. We need to pray. But we got to start coming together as God's people. And it doesn't matter if you're a Baptist, a Wesleyan. Did I find Billy? No. But this is the... It's always been the Chris and this show, that show, whoever show. Got 13 people on. And I'm about ready to welcome somebody and he's emotionally wrecked and he just don't, he wants to be honest. And we have, come here little buddy. <laughs> there's, there's 16 people on dude. Hey guys. Oh, that's the biggest I got. Be honest. It's Anthony, guys. How's it going? Be honest. Oh. I just ran into Anthony uh, walking down the road, and I went and got him uh, little snacks, and <clears throat> he's on the binge. Be honest, dude. Yeah. Um, it's, like, hard to do here cause it's a, to I be know. emotional here because it's, like, a weakness. But uh, I was just – I just broke down to him that this place is going to kill me. Like, I'm going to die out here, and I've never felt so broken. So, um I've never been at such a wit's end. I've never you gotta not, speak up. I've never not known not what to do. I've never been at such a wit's end. This place is gonna kill kill me. Like I'm gonna die out here. Um, so I told him. I told Anthony. This is what I told Anthony. I said we can come home in the next week or two. Get plane tickets and come home to Indiana. I got a job lined up for him. Uh, my buddy John and his boss. They'll help take care of him. And I'll get him a place lined up and some aftercare lined up, and I'll be with him all I'm summer to, long. I'm willing to do what, anything else, man. Like I This just, kid just broke down out here in the middle of the road, and hey that's guys. not a good thing to do when you're out here uh, uh, in Skid Row, obviously. And uh, 
you're hooked on heroin. Let's be honest. No, actually, it's not even heroin. What no, is it's it? Because uh, Chris, Crystal. Yeah, <laughs> I'm tired of hearing her name, dude. I'm serious. Oh. I hear it everywhere. Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Yeah, yeah it's just because, like, I don't know. Um, I, I, that's what I've been fighting. It's just everywhere. And uh, it's horrible. Like, Dude, I, I don't, I don't, even, I wanna, be I don't even want to get into it. I know, but I won't, about yeah, you do. You have to. You got to let that out, though. But you look, there'll be a time and a place for that, too. You got to get it out. But I've been walking around. I took a three hour nap today, and I kept saying, God, what am I, what am I supposed to do, man? You yeah. know, here's two guys that I've been working hard with and, uh, you know, want to get them out of the situation. And it's like, and I'm getting frustrated myself because it's like, I know you or Billy or both are supposed to get out of here and we're going to pull you out of here but you got to be willing to do it yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah I am willing to do it and people are saying like come with you and people will help you and come that's what I'm them. asking for is like I'm coming like I'm breaking down you know I'm, I'm still I'm asking and what like what can I do I'm willing to do anything because I've never felt so broken. Well you got to do you know what all you got to do? I'm going to die. Like, you know I'm what you die. all got to do is be honest. I've and been breaking down to God and I ran into him and it was, just, it was actually like a really good relief to see him so yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I have before, and like I can't continue to live this way. Like it's just like antagonizingly pain. Like state. what did I tell you a while ago that I'm tired of? I'm I want to leave. I've never been so broken, so damaged, so like I just so I told him I don't. I've never. Have you ever felt like you just do not know what to do at all? That's how I feel. I feel almost suicidal. Like if you want to be honest. So. You don't stay with me. Yeah, I know. I just I don't want to feel that way. So. Be able to do my you know due diligence, but yeah. As of right now, it's like I'm you know I'm I'm literally crying out for help, just to be able to get me on my feet so I can be you know a functioning person again. That's all I'm asking for. You know, is a little help. I really don't have anybody, so <laughs> you know. You got me, buddy. And I got these people. I mean, I, I like I just I knew like I've been walking around for days. I was just like, you know, how long have you been up? Um, I finally slept for like a whole day, entire day yesterday. What? But I was up for three days. Three days. Yeah. And uh, there's groups of people. I, there's it's just it's messed up. It's like a messed up place. Yeah, you uh, you you would have to live this experience. Now I, I'm not living Anthony's experience. It's pure evil. But you know, it is pure evil out here, and everybody is hustling somebody. I mean, if you can think of it, you can sell it out here. And, like, like, I need to be involved in involving myself, which is like people that are like-minded, you know what I mean, that want to give for themselves. If I put myself around this stuff, you know, and being the person, the type of person I am, I'm going to... You know, if you hang out at a barbershop long enough, you'll yeah. get a haircut. Right. But you do need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting crazy here in uh, L.A. I want to show you something that's being neglected since this stuff's been going on. But uh, look at this. This is because the city's not coming around picking up trash. It's everywhere. Everywhere you go. Uh, the thing about them here is, I've, I'm not stopping my ministry. Uh, you know, there's people that depend on me down here praying with them. But, uh, they, trust me, I've seen people get their head knocked off because they were filming or taking pictures of that. If the filming's not perfect, I can't help it because it's a documentary and I'm not gonna get killed over filming. Or beat up or whatever, you know? But it's kind of uh, uh, creepy down here. Because you never know what's going to happen day by day. You see what's going on in the news. Ohio just announced they're closing all the bars and the restaurants tonight at 9 o'clock. Uh, a lot of, well, let me just tell you one. There's one, two, three, four. I know of uh, four or five missions in a two block area around here. And there's one called Emmanuel Church. And as of tonight, as of tonight, they are closing their doors down to the homeless. It's a church combined with the shelter. They have chapel every night for the homeless. And they're throwing all the homeless people out of there, out of the church tonight. Emmanuel Church.
in LA. Throwing everybody out on the street. And as you can see, if this thing gets a little bit crazy, which is crazy to me, is that what are they gonna do with all the homeless people? I don't know, but we are in some crazy times, my friend. And uh, I'm staying. Uh, you know, like I said before, I got people that depend on me. And I'm still supporting two families. This ministry is still supporting two families up in uh, Anderson, Indiana. And uh, God knows uh, if they're going to have a job. This is uh, I've been to, you know, Indiana, uh, Florida three different cities there and uh, Phoenix Arizona and here <clears throat> this is a wholly different kind of uh, this homeless is taking it to a whole different here, uh, level after being down here for last month you know there's a lot of issues there's a lot of people to blame for this right? the homeless people you know the way they're living but also to the government, the church, the regular people that pay in taxes. Because you'd be amazed how many billions of dollars is funded down here and other people are making money, big money off that homeless situation. There's no policing. When you don't have police, this is what you have, chaos. And look, let's be honest, real talk. I'm about real talk. If you don't like it, there's always another channel somewhere but I'm living it and I see it I hear it but look if you're a junkie if you're a dopehead this is the place to live you get all the drugs you want on this corner here the other corner corner across the street back corner over there and down this corner too and all the way down that corner down there too all kinds. I, I had a guy rattle off about 10 different drugs he had. He wanted to sell. This could happen in any community in the United States anytime. Especially what's going on with this virus. There's so many single parents out there. So many people living paycheck by paycheck. And uh, what do you, what's I mean all the bars and restaurants closing in Ohio how, how they gonna, look paychecks they get them every Friday or every other Friday how are they gonna get paid they caught regardless regardless if you say to me that oh they won't pay rent okay they won't pay electric bill okay they won't pay water bill it still costs money to live every day and a lot of people are one check one check behind they're doing Rob Peter to pay Paul, however that saying goes. I was shocked the church is even closed. You might say, well, you know, okay, y'all, precautions, precautions. Elderly people should stay home. Bad health people should stay home. But I guess my thing is, look, who's going to come down here with me to pray with these people? Heal the sick. I think the disciples, I think that's what we're called to do. I don't know. Something to think about. And like I said in a post earlier, if this was one of your, there's a guy over there in a wheelchair, your grandpa or your father or your aunt or your uncle or a loved one, would you want me to help them now? Be prepared. Don't freak out. Um, you know, I mean, just it's hard to be in an area that's dirty all the time. I mean, that corner down there was just, you know, they don't come by as often clean the stuff up now of the city. I don't know, but we are in some terrible times, and I think it's important that we look to God for the answers. Help our neighbors out. And look, I'm sure a lot of you have been off for the weekend, but we're, we're not, you all ain't going to stay in your house. 
all creatures of heaven. We have to connect with people. That's why there is a God. It's a relationship. And uh, we shouldn't allow fear to control us every movement we do. But again, I'm saying, be cautious. And they're human beings. Good. They need prayer too. They need somebody to, uh, you know, guide them and direct them. And I'm not worried a bit about this virus. If I get it, I get it. Uh, but I'm more concerned about. Uh, I'm more concerned about uh, not the fact that if the dead go crazy and they uh, decide to pull and keep their talk down here, it's going to be a, it's going to be a mess. Sorry, I'm at now. The lack of concern. And you got a shelter across the corner at uh, a church that's going all the homeless out the street. But uh, I'll keep going because I got some people that depend on me and it's been innocent too. And uh, we'll see what happens. But. Uh, you guys have a good night. Check up on your neighbors. Check up on the elderly. There's nothing wrong with this. Uh, you know, don't get, you know, especially elderly. Just, you know, if they don't have a phone, leave a note on the door or, or whatever. Just make sure they're okay. They, that they have water, food, and necessities. And uh, I think it's time for this country to pull together and help each other out for once. Instead of living this selfish life that we live, I've lived it too. So don't beat me up on that comment. I've lived it too. Christ is about a relationship. A relationship with Him and with the body of Christ. And uh, if you're sick, yeah, don't. Anytime you're sick, even with us, it's got like the flu. The flu kills a lot of people every year. But. Uh, This is the real deal. I feel, and when I uh, look, when I get on the metro bus here, I'd be surprised if they don't close the whole transportation system down in LA, the trains and the metro buses. When you get on metro buses, you, you people are just looking at you, waiting for you to see if you're going to sneeze or cough or touch your face. I'm not too sure they won't stop the bus and throw you off of it. I don't know. But I'm not going to try it. You'd have to ask yourself if Jesus was here today, what would he be at? Well, one, he was homeless. He didn't have a home. There's a scripture in the Bible where he says, many has their head to lay down, but not, not I. No one have it. So, uh, keep the homeless in prayer, please. Keep the people that, all the single parents, the single moms, the single dads, that are raising kids on one check and they depend on that check every week that others will step up and help them out. You'll be interested to see in the next week or two what happens because they're not, you got to understand, they're, they're looking at, they're not at the peak of this crisis. So what's going to be next? They're going to tell, uh, tell everybody they have to stay in and what are they going to do with all the homeless people? a lot of people. Always remember, God's been there for you. He's always here. Psalms 121, for I cried out and the Lord heard me. For I cried out and the Lord heard me. Maybe it's time for this nation to cry out. This is my good buddy, yes, Mr. Ed, Ed, Edward. Yes. Huh? Yes, yes, right yes. here. He's my best friend. You're, right here, you're my best friend. This guy right here, let me tell you about this guy right here. I don't care what he did. I never asked you what you did. Yeah. But he was locked up for 36 years. 36 years, right? Yep. And we met, uh, what, about two, three, maybe three weeks ago? Three weeks ago, yeah. And he has such a kind, loving spirit for Jesus. Thank you. And for people. Yeah. And for him to come out here in this atmosphere yeah. and continue to do well, it is the act of God, his hand working yeah. in this man right here. Yeah. Look. 
We're out here. Even Ed, we're not here talking to people. We're out here. We're not going to let this virus keep us out from helping real people. I love this dude. Yeah, I do. I love you too. And see, he loves me. He loves yeah. me a long time. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but real, he was he real been, talk. Yeah, real talk. But he's been locked up for 36 years. Nothing like me. I can't look. I had to help him with his cell phone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even know what cell phone was. Yes, yes. And he, I think he threw one of them across the room, didn't you? Like, you got frustrated? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've been helping him and giving him money here and there, helping yes, him out. Appreciate and uh, making, giving him encouraging words. And he keeps me going. Yep. This guy keeps me going. Uh, 36 years locked up in a free world today. What year was that? 1984. 1984, he got locked up. I don't care what he does. He's a man of God. Yeah. This guy right here, he's got a loving heart, kind soul, and uh, he's just a uh, good friend. I'm going to miss you when I leave here. You know that? Yeah, me too. I'm going to miss you so much. I, I, you got my phone number, though. I know, but you know how that stuff works. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll end up losing stuff or whatever. But I need to get you uh, on Facebook so you learn how to do that so we really stay in contact, you know? Yeah, I do that, though. Yeah, you know you can learn. You know? we're, we're all teachable. We've been locked up. You know, I mean, they taught us the routines every day, right? Yes, sir. The do's and don'ts, or we would have got in big trouble, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this guy. I love you too, bro. Yes, yeah. What's your plans? Me, my friends, goes to Florida. You're going to Florida? Yes. That's right. He's yeah. gonna, well, you got next year. Next One year, year you get off the. Yeah. Uh, in May. You supposed to take it in May. Look, this guy been locked up for 36 years, and they still want to put him on a uh, ankle bracelet for. Uh, what? That testing drug, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, I've been clean for idea is stupid. You know, know. Because I've been clean all these years. It's like, let the guy go, man. Let him live life, man. He's, yeah. he, he, it's, over. it's over. Right. It's over. It's over. People just yeah, don't understand uh, that. When you've been locked up and you pay your debt to society, we were wrong. Yeah. And you get out, it's over. It's a clean. That's all. Yeah. Clean. It's clean. clean. I did my time. I know. You know? I don't know. I'll tell them already why. What you want to give yeah. me, me this shit. And we gave him money to go see his daughter. You remember yeah, that one when you sir. went to see your daughter and yeah. your grandchild? Yes, Boy or girl? Boy. Boy. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not afraid of the virus because this is my buddy. And I'll yeah. do anything for him right here on Skid Row. I, I know you would, buddy. Yes, you got my back. I love yes, you, Edward. I love you. All right, buddy. See you tomorrow. We'll go to there. Look at that. 36 years locked up. Where's Anthony? Look, guys. I can't babysit them no more. They're here, but they're out doing crazy things. I can't worry about them, you know? I wish I could take Edward back to Indiana, but he's on uh, strict rules and guidelines still after 36 years of being locked up. But Anthony and Billy still doing the same thing. Uh, you know, we planted the seeds. You win some, you lose some. Hopefully, I pray that uh, their spirit will wake up and uh, they will, uh, but you gotta leave here drug look I know I'm gonna say it you can't do a drug rehab and the mist of where drugs are at it just won't work you might catch one out of I don't know how many but it just won't work overall you just you gotta, you gotta break it you gotta break the cycle the thinking process has to be changed too and to do that you gotta get out get out of it you gotta totally get out of it Good. hallelujah praise Jesus guys Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. You okay, brother? All right, all right. Oh, no. Here's the party area. It's amazing. If you're a junkie, this is a place to be. Yep. You okay, man? Praise Jesus. Let me take you down this walkway down here. I'll show you where the really, it's bad everywhere. Man, these people are cussing. Give me some loves. Hearts, hearts, praise Jesus. Okay. You guys know what I'm You see this. It's sad. I talk to these ladies every day. Uh, I try not to talk much because if they notice that I'm doing this, they, they'll chase me out or take a blow to me or whatever. 
So if I go silent, I'm just doing something. It's just you know, not draw no attention. This is Skid Row, LA, 5th and this is 6th Street and uh, some public. Pretty much the main drag, one of the main drags out here. I think there's like 70 some blocks of nothing but homeless tents. 77 0. That's a 7 0. 40 some thousand. There's grandma's out here. Friday after next. Ma'am, you okay? Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The video is never going to be perfect when I do things to this wall video. I don't, you know, the stuff you see on YouTube is, uh, stuff you see on YouTube, this stuff's being uh, script and uh, on YouTube. This, my stuff's not script. Them people, they, what they do is on YouTube, they're pulling people out of here and take them somewhere else and pay them like 20, 25 dollars to say something and get them, you know, doing some crazy things, but they, I've never seen them out here like this, or living with them. This is in the back of my mission where I stay at. Uh, look, uh, you, you, I'm going to see if there's any rats running around, they're running around everywhere though. These rats are big, there's one right there. There's a rat right there, see it? There he goes, I'm in the hole. He's coming back out, his tail's out. Look at him all. Hundred, look at him, one, two. They're going in the trash. I saw one the other day carrying a piece of sliced pizza down the middle of the street. The whole slice almost gonna haul it and drug it into a hole. I was just kind of like laughing over it, to be honest with you. It was like, wow, he must be making a delivery. <laughs> uh, rat's pizza. <laughs> hey, hey, brother, you okay? Hey, you okay, brother? Hey, you all right? Hey, can we help you up? Huh? Hold on, man. what's your name? Crane. Crane? Crane. Can we help you up? Okay, yeah. Uh, you get that side. You want to sit or you want to stand, bro? Huh? Good. Sit. I think you got a little too much weight on there. On the back of your uh, backpack. Wonder where are you? Yeah. Why don't you sit there for a while, all right? Until you get some, yeah. You want me to help you get that off of your back? Uh, um, yeah. No, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. So, okay. Yeah, I think you should stay there for a little bit, bro, all yeah. right? Just leave it on, just sit there. Stay there. I'm gonna stay here and watch him, make sure he's all right. Because you know, people start coming around, seeing somebody pass out like that with a bunch of stuff on his back, and they start going through it, and picking it, and robbing him. That's the way it is down here on Skid Row. <clears throat> but uh, at least we got him setting up. I'm gonna stay and watch him for a little bit. Yeah, give him some water, that'd be a good thing. Rain, 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 go away. It doesn't make it good when you got a cell phone with a screen uh, cracked and uh, you're trying to do a live feed. But uh, I'll try to keep you updated as much as I can. But the main thing is, people, we got to stay calm. And use precautions and stay calm during this thing. It will pass. Um, 
it will, we will get through it. And I think it's time for uh, us to come together as a country, as uh, people of uh, different races and different backgrounds and help each other out and see, see us through this. And this is the most important thing, and to help people out. I would feel bad if I left here and got on a plane. There was other people on there. Uh, my cough went away, so I feel like I don't have it, but I don't know that. I don't know that. I get uh, my I get my uh, temperature tested every week, and it's good. So, but if I get on that plane and I don't want to take anything back to Indiana, I think. It would be best if I stay here and write it out and see what happens. So keep this country in prayer. We got this. We're American. This is America. We're God's children. We got this. It's just a uh, you know a bump in the road, a big bump, and we'll all get through it. And we'll look back on it. It was challenging, but we all came together as one and, and uh, overcome this virus. And do your part. Just do your part, and we'll be fine. Trust me. Don't go buy 10 million rolls of toilet paper or. Um, noodles. I need noodles. So don't go buy all of them cases of noodles. Torn between it because there's a lot of issues you got to think about. They're talking about putting them in, in hotels and places, but you got to remember 90% of these people are on some kind of a drug and a hotel would probably be a little bit crazy. They would have to have security and are they, you know, going to get their uh, drugs or, you know, you take them straight off the drugs, there's going to be some uh, relapse we all know I've been there and done that a few times so it's kind of like uh, I just really concerned about that because you're going to probably have more possibly more people uh, in hospitals and dying than you are if you, you know just leave them where they're at maybe contain them in that area down there and see what happens there that's what I think I would probably evaluate doing if they're going into a complete lockdown is to be able to uh, somehow contain them down there in a six or eight block area and because they're so used to living like that now you're interrupt you're i know it's it's uh you know you're 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 changing their lifestyles they've been so used to for all these years and um a lot of them probably won't leave they'll probably fight and won't leave so i don't know if that's a good idea or not but we'll see what happens pray for them and uh, but uh i want to show you you see where i live at this is this is my TV stand. I'm gonna show you my TV stand. Can you see it? This is my TV stand. Now I know some of you guys out there. That's my TV stand. Box of cookies in a box, and I put it right here. And I watch some uh, church uh, sermons and some TV, and I do watch some old time shows that I like. And this is this is uh, my uh, food. Can you see that? I got tuna, I got uh, tuna packs, I got peanut butter, I got uh, water, and I got I got enough food to last two weeks. And it only cost me about mm, $35, $36. One of the best advantages of being homeless and being uh, locked up is that you become very creative in your meals and how you store things. So, uh, you know, use this time in your life to be able to... Uh, readjust and reevaluate and um, just kind of um, figure out what you want to do in life and it's going to pass it's going to be, you know god's got this it's all in his hands and i have no doubt and i have total faith that we're going to come out of this if we all stick together and help each other i just hope and pray that uh, you know i look at the long-term effect i just hope and pray that you know, we do the right thing. And 40, 50 years ago, when people like myself that are gone, we're setting an example for the younger generations is that uh, they'll look back on this, uh, uh, America 2020 uh, virus, whatever it was. And I look back on it that they did the right thing. Salvation is the time of now. You should not wait. We lived in a world that was every day that you hustled and bustled and did things and all those other things about your uh, spirituality or uh, death or your salvation was always on the back burner. I know this because I've done that many, many times before. But now <clears throat> this disruption has taken us from living from a chaos world to craziness every day to being 
confined in a uh, area that we're not used to. But my friends, it is great times to be alive right now. Look, the stores are going to be open. They're still open. They're going to be open. So stop taking all the food and, and save it. I seen the post that was so powerful. If you can imagine this post, wartime Vietnam, World War II, and the sacrifices the men took and their families took while their loved ones went to the war. But yet, you take a veteran that goes in a grocery store and there's no bread, no meats, because somebody wanted to take it all, a lot of it. This time now is to sacrifice and do what's right for everybody. Oh, there he is. Look, there's, there he is. He wants to say hi. Hey, Snoopy wants to say hey. hey Snoopy. Snoopy. Oh, he went from the uh, trenches to the penthouse. Look at him. Yeah, he's over my head. Look at him. You gotta be creative, my friends, in a situation like this, tailor-made. We are tailor-made, we're God-given children. We was born his, in his image, my friends. On top of bed, yep, there he is, Glenda. Hope everybody's doing okay tonight. I know I am, having a good time, and uh, uh, just wanna jump on here and just give you some encouraging words. I guess it's this, tailor-made. Remember that you are tailor made for this. We can do this. Our uh, friends way back when, our grandparents, our uncles and our aunts and who served in the wars did it. They made a bunch of sacrifices for us. We just become a generation of uh, selfish and we want it now. Well, look, it's time to sit back and relax. Uh, you're tailor-made to, to accomplish this, my friends. You got this. You got this. This time will pass. Stay calm. Here's uh, L.A. down. Well, look, it's a ghost town right now. No one there? And no one? Asking, what in the world are you doing now? I am doing my duty today. I'm giving plasma. They are still open, and they're in need of plasma. So I go do my duty and get plasma, make a little bit extra money and help uh, the folks out. Did you? It's a great day to be alive and uh, praise Jesus and he's in control. He has this. We're going to get through this. I'm hopeful and uh, when I say I'm hopeful, we're going to get through it. We'll get through this. We always do. We always do. This is my uh, buddy here and I'm going to miss him, Edward. Edwin. Uh, Edwin. Edwin. And uh, what country was you from? You from? Puerto, Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. I met him about a month ago here and he just got out of uh, the joint for 36 years. And I never asked him what, why? And I don't care because he's my friend. He paid his dues, didn't you, brother? Yes, sir. Look, he didn't know what a cell phone was until I came around. I taught him a little bit about the cell phone, the technology. I don't think you like it, do you? <laughs> But look, this guy right here, I love. I'm going to miss him. And he's uh, doing good. He just has to go through some hoops with this whole prison thing of being released, which I don't agree with. But uh, Edward, is, uh, he, we helped him out. We've helped him out with our ministry. And uh, he appreciates it. And uh, he... Uh, when 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 you gonna get off your stuff next year or next this year? year? No, next year. Next year. So the bad thing about it is that you know he gets out and he wants to go do good, but uh, his PO tells him he's got to stay in this area. Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense at all. Nope. At all. He's ready to go make a life for himself and go be with his family and get going. And uh, this guy right here, look, he's gonna make it. Yes. You're going to make it. I will. And I wish I could take him home, but I can't because he, uh, he's he got restrictions for another year. He served 36 years, and he's, after after a year, are you done, done? Yeah, I'm done already. Everything, paper yeah. and everything. Yeah. I, would you rather go do the time for a year and get out and be done and over with clean? Yeah. I know. Here they throw them in, he, they throw them in with the wolves. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. I mean, every, there's... There's crime around, there's dope around, and you're throwing, that doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah. 
This whole system's messed up, ain't it, Edward? Yes, sir. But hey, I just gave him some money, so I just want to tell. I was hoping I'd see him down here, and I saw him down from the corner, and uh, I'm gonna miss you, dude. Yeah, well, I want to miss you too. I'm gonna miss you. I love you, yes, man. I love you too, bro. And uh, yes, you're you're gonna do good. You know you know you're a child of God. Yes. You know you got Jesus in you, and you're yeah. gonna do good. And and don't yeah, I, I I feel really confident. None of this stuff's gonna tempt you. You're gonna fight like a mad dog to keep oh, going. Yeah, yes, I will. Yeah. Yes. So Edwin here, my buddy. I love him. It's time to wake up, America. And what he's saying is. What I'm saying is, me and Snoopy's both in agreement on this, is that we minister to the homeless, to the less fortunate. My job, I don't know, job, my calling is essential to the souls of America, to the lost souls. So if I feel like I am safe to go down into the trenches me and Snoopy and go battle the enemy and win souls for Jesus Christ we are going to do that with a virus without a virus it doesn't matter because we know we are covered by the grace covered by the blood of Jesus and Snoopy is just hey we have turned our heads America has turned their heads for way too many years for the the homeless of America I'm guilty of it everybody well I would say just about everybody's guilty of it too but turning their heads walking away from it just putting a band-aid on it let them live where they want to live they want to be like that let them be like that they are God's children and we need to stop it but uh, life's good it's beautiful I've enjoyed this journey. I did. Was there times? Uh, was there times that uh, I wanted to uh, quit? Uh, yep, sure was. There was a time in Florida when I was on my bike and I just wanted to throw the bike down and say, I'm done. See you later. I'm done. But uh, the Holy Spirit kicks in and keep 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 pedaling. I'm proud of what the work we did. I'm proud of the work we did. I'm proud of the people that jumped on board and uh, that uh, gave money. And I'm proud of my prayer partners. They're just as important, my financial partners. There's people that don't give that uh, are my prayer partners. I can reach out to them and they're going, they just don't sit down and do a little two minute prayer. I know these people, man, they, they're praying. Earnestly, they're praying constantly. Well, I'm gonna get off here. I think I said enough, but uh, look, we just can't stop uh, going out and, and evangelizing because of some virus. 